Thank you. Welcome, Welcome, Rob. Rob. Thank you. Come on in. How's it going? Good, good. We're on the air, just so you know. Okay. Yes. Good. Normally, we don't like to tell people that because we're hoping they say something <laughs> stupid and inflammatory. But you, we want to have a good one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we saw you on Fox. We didn't hear what you said, but we just got to, we got to watch you. Oh, you contributed cool. for those guys? Uh, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. What made the decision, I guess, to start, because you know, usually it's so secretive and nobody knows who did what. What made you the decision for you to actually come out and talk and, and let everybody know? And by the way, Rob is plugging his book, The Operator, Firing the Shots That Killed Osama Bin Laden and My Years as a SEAL team warrior? Well, that was a unique uh, time because when, from the time that we, the team killed Bin Laden to the time we flew back, the word had already started to spread. It was like, what's the first question you ask? It was like, who did it? And so guys in the SEAL community and their friends around town sort of knew it, so it kind of came out slowly like that. And um, it, it, was, it was kind of an uncomfortable time because uh, the team did it. The, sure. the agencies found him. We, we were just the, the end of it. You know, we were guys they told last, and we went in and did it. Um, and then... Um, I made a donation to the memorial up here, and then after talking to... Uh, of your lot, shirt, right? Of the shirt, yes. Um, talking to a lot of the survivors that had, had family members die in the towers, and having them say that you know, there'll never be closure, but this helps with the healing, that we know, like a real name, a real face, this is... Um, this happened. That that kind of pushed me towards the. I got I got to tell them if I can help a few people here in this in this uh, auditorium. I can I can probably help thousands of them. And it's, I, it's a um, that's one reason. And then it's just it, the whole story. I mean, it's it's uh, it's the book is called the operator because it's the life of the operators. Now, I'm not calling myself singling myself out. It's, a, a lot of guys go through this. Operators are Rangers, SEALs, uh, Green Berets, all that stuff, Marines, and um, this is the a lot, the story about starting as a normal person, just. Going to you know, like the chapter twenty three is the Bin Laden raid. It's not about the Bin right, Laden right, raid. Right, right, right. It, just the proof is if you stay positive and n never quit, doesn't matter where you're from, what you look like, you can do anything you want. I mean, I, I joined the Navy because of a girl, because of a breakup. Yeah, and you're I, drunk, I, right? <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, um, then it you know it turned into well, I found out what seals are, and I uh, it'll be just be cool to try the training, and I'll do four years. I'll come back with some awesome stories from my friends in Butte, Montana, and then I met the guys, the other operators. I'm like, well, God, I can't leave these guys. I got I got to stick around with them. So I reenlisted, and then 9/11 happened. Like, well, I'm not leaving now. They trained me to fight for you know eight years. I got to go fight, and then I found out about uh, other SEAL teams. I went there, and then you know I'm with the group of guys that uh, on a on a large coalition team that rescued the lone survivor um, I found myself on my birthday in 2009 leaving my daughter's classroom uh, preschool classroom and 16 hours later we're in the Indian Ocean to rescue Richard Phillips same guys right. then we got called in for the Bin Laden raid we, um, we were on the base when that dude Bo Bergdahl walked off you know this is all wow, wow. We're, it's like it's almost like in Iraq, right? He, he's the guy that, that in that, Afghanistan. Oh, Afghanistan! Yeah. Didn't he just kind of go he into the populace and the, the Taliban population? grabbed him, and he was a prisoner for five years? I mean, just going through hell. Can I, can I jump in, Rob? Sure. I want to yeah. ask you a question too. Uh, it, first of all, the Pakistani government denied that they knew Bin Laden was there. Yeah. We have no idea, even though he's right by their West Point. I don't buy it for a second. I was going to ask you. Yeah. If you, if now, you I mean, there's certain parts of the government they've got their own interests. They have interest with allies, so some know, some don't. The military maybe didn't, but their intelligence service did. They have interest in hiding him because maybe if we protect them, they Al Qaeda won't attack us. People, there are some people that knew he didn't. I don't think he lived right there. Or no, nobody knew. There's there's a there's a, a high ranking Pakistani intelligence officer living less than a couple hundred yards away from him. So they so knew. They had to know something was there. And we had we had uh, Trump on the phone one time before he was president, before he ran mm -hmm. president, and I asked him on the phone like cause I gave Obama credit for authorizing. I thought it was a ballsy thing. You're going it was into. definitely it was definitely ballsy, but but Trump's like no any president would have done that, and I'm like I don't know they didn't know 100 percent he authorized them to go into Pakistan which was a, a sovereign well, I mean, country they, they gave him a few options and it was uh, you know the missile thing a joint effort with the Pakistan they gave him like five options and he decided on uh, it was he was he did a great job and he he did authorize it it's his call and he just said uh, I wasn't 100 percent sure that Bin Laden was there but I was 100 percent sure that you guys could go in find out and come back which. He had more confidence in, in us living than I did. Like, I thought we were going in one way. Like, that's it. Like, you thought you were dead. Yeah. we were gonna. It was almost to the point where looking up at the building, it's like, I'm going to die tonight, but this is historic, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to treasure this. I'm going to – this is cool. And then, you, you know, I'm watching really cool guys, other operators do really cool stuff. And I described that in the book, what they're doing, what I saw. Just thinking, man, these guys are cool. Go up the stairs. Uh, the analyst told us we'd run into Bin Laden's son, which we did. Amazing story of how the point man took him down, and then we go up the stairs. I turn right after watching, you know, one of my best friends jump on what he thought were suicide bombers. So the guy behind him get the shot. And I turn. There's Bin Laden three feet away. So it's just the tactics got me there. So so mentally, is the secret to doing this? Because I've seen like other interviews you've done. You talk about how like you know part of being a seal is also it's just not allowing time 
to become your enemy just because you have so much of it. Like you would sit there and just count. Yeah, we, and count and I, count is is, yeah. is 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 part of it to just be in the moment at all times, like you said, to not the counting was to yeah to get your mind off of it. I'd done it before. I learned as a sniper. I'd, I'd worked also in Kosovo, um, right around nine eleven. We're doing reconnaissance surveillance, <clears throat> and just sitting there staring at. A, a, a group of houses. You you need to occupy your mind. You lose it. So I just started counting, and then on the flight into uh, Bin Laden's house, I started counting again, and just because we can get blown up at any time. No one knows if these helicopters work. We're we're invading a nation. They can shoot us down, and we can't even be mad at them because we're invading. Right. Like of course that's what yeah, you would you're, do. You're yeah. I'm not mad at you, but then you know you start counting, and then it was it was one of those things. It's almost Hollywood. That as we turned, we banked 80 minutes into a 90 minute flight. And I was counting something like uh, 556, 557, and, and in my mind I said, freedom itself was attacked this morning by a faceless coward and freedom will be defended. And that's what President Bush said on 9-11. He addressed the world, and I'm like, whoa, I'm on this mission. This is it. So it did hit you. It hit me then, and then it sort of sunk in when I, when I shot him. And I had another guy come in and, and uh, in the room after me, and he said, um, he looked at me and said, are you okay? And I said, yeah, what do we, uh, what do, we do now? And he said... We find the computers, bro. We've done this hundreds of times. <laughs> and I said, yeah, you're, you're right. My God. He goes, yeah, you just killed Bin Laden. Like, your life changed. Yeah. And you knew in the moment, like, this is... That was it. I don't... Yeah, this is this is big. This is a big one. Was there resentment from the other guy? Like, because, again, they say team effort. Oh, so it's, it's always easy for the guy who did the shooting. I've never said it's not a team effort. No, no, no. Yeah. But they, it is. But mm -hmm. did they start to feel like you well, got him and we it's, didn't? It's a tough one. I explain it in the book, too, that, like... When the lead sniper for the Phillips raid or the Phillips rescue took the initial shots, some guys were so close to him but didn't get a shot. They're mad at him, and it's it's just a it's an alpha male thing. A lot of I mean, you know, the, any any seal in my position would have done what I did. I just sure. happened to get there. But if you're that close, it's I mean, it's yeah. You, I mean, some people will probably be upset, and that's fine. And especially if guys were on the mission, I respect anything they say. That's fine. If you're mad about it, you're mad about it. But it's a it's a historic story. There's nothing wrong with being proud of a, of a great American thing that we did, and that, that's what it was. And it's, it's a it's a great story. Do you think that they don't like the fact that you're speaking about it? Because a lot of them at home, they'd be like, "Who got him?" And they'd be like, "I can't say." I mean, wake <laughs> <laughs> I, I run into that a lot, and generally, it's like if the guy that says, "Well, I can't talk about it," it's like, "Well, you probably don't have anything to talk about." That. Right? That's probably what it is. Because I mean, I, you know. I know a lot of SEALs, I know a lot of uh, pilots, I know a lot of Marines, and if, if they've done something, they'll tell, you, they'll tell you about it. I mean, some guys are quieter than others, but you know, the guys that always say, I can't talk about it, but that's, they're usually not, not much there. Do you have times in daily life, because you said uh, in the book you talk about being on the way to, you on the way to, the, to, to take off of this mission, you're in, still in the state of Virginia whatever, or Miami, and you look driving by people, and you're going, no, they have no idea what these bearded guys are about to go and do yeah it was it was a it was a pretty surreal feeling i mean just from the moment that the uh commanding officer from that seal team came in and said uh, the reason you guys are here is because uh this is as close as we've ever been to Osama bin laden it was it was cool looking around at my uh, you know these are my brothers and just seeing that there was no cheering there was it was just like all right we going now just a bunch of pros and they're ready to rock and roll and, and uh we were ready that day but we had to train for a few weeks just to something at that level you need to convince people that are actually making the calls hey we can do this we'll do it just fine and the helicopters won't ideally won't fall out of the sky and and uh, which one did yeah uh yeah that was that was a funny story too because uh Life is what happens around you while you're planning for other yes. stuff. And that was like on a Wednesday, a uh, week and a half into planning it. We had the perfect plan. And one of the bosses, he's all tired. And he's like, all right, what's the worst thing that could happen? I think it was the youngest guy in the room said, oh, the helicopter could crash in the front yard. Maybe we should, like, I don't know, talk about that for 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. wow. And we did. And that's what happened. The worst thing. Yeah, right. but you guys, uh, and then and then you try to blow off. I mean, I know we're jumping all over. I don't care. It's a fun Fine. story. <laughs> and, you, and you went to blow off the uh, the front gate. Yeah, we we knew there was a gate on the northeast side, so we went to blow that. And we it was. I mean, it's what's neat about this too. Uh, this book. A lot of people that go through this training, great senses of humor, because you need to. If you if you can't laugh at some point, you'll lose your mind. So we joked about we're going to get to this place, and it's going to be one of those hallways that gets small and small, and you're just like open lot, you know, like a bug bunny house. <laughs> but we're, we went to the northeast corner where we knew there was a gate and we put a charge on it and blew it and it opened like a tin can into a brick wall it was a fake door it's like this is happening and but and the even the breacher was like this is bad and i'm like no this is good that's a fake door he's in here they wouldn't do that because they're right because we wouldn't there wouldn't be that yeah. kind of security and, measure then, and then we didn't for know nobody right? we didn't know the helicopter crashed and so we, we announced that we didn't know where it was we're like well we're gonna blow the front door and they said well we'll just open it so we're like what and then the door opens the thumb came out like a thumbs up and that's the point where you're like you know what i 
worrying about why they're in there now doesn't matter. We'll talk about it after. I don't care how they got in there. Other guys are in there. And th- th- we didn't know the helicopter crash. You, you know what's amazing? One. Bin Laden must have been in this house like, oh, f-. like he knows <laughs> the <laughs> Americans <laughs> yeah. are coming. His worst night, the, the only good, like you look at like, he, he had at least a 30 minute nightmare. However long it took you guys to get up there, 15 minutes? I think it was, the guys were so good and were so good at, we'd been at, in combat. So, like this was like mission 419 for me personally. Other guys had done more. And it's, uh, it's, uh, there's, we're so quiet. Quiet. So going up the stairs, there's really good stories in there about I don't they might not have known what was going on. They heard a crash, I'm assuming, and we were creeping up the stairs, but it was dark, we're quiet and and uh and we so got they, in there. They could have thought that you guys had come and that your helicopter had crashed Something. and you would you they, you'd fail. They, they couldn't hear it. No, he <laughs> heard the helicopter crash, he heard shots, and then he heard another one is like, Well, there's Khalid and his wife probably went, yeah, What the, do you think's happening? The, he said, What do you think? And stupid? I'm not gonna I'm not gonna ruin the Khalid story, because uh, it's in the book and I always have yes. fun in the book. That I saw the point man uh, deal with Khalid, and I, I remember thinking, I really hope we live through this because that's the coolest thing I've ever seen. I never would have thought of that. it. W- it was really great, and uh, just the way you describe, and again, you have to read the book because I read it, and it was like I saw Zero Dark Thirty, I saw it, but there were still things in the book from your point of view that I didn't know. Yeah, and yeah. there was There's still a lot, lot of to things too, and you just find out that the, uh, the the most simple answer is what happened. That's what we did, and it wasn't. The, the, I mean, there are parts in there where we're, we're fighting these, these these tough online jihadis, and seriously asking each other after a big fight, like, are we? Missing Missing the war because that's easy, right? But are these the tough guy? Okay, I mean we're just here, and and what well, I mean it turns out we're fighting the guys that are ISIS uh, now, but it wasn't a wasn't a problem for a, just an amazing team. What do you think was the bet? Like when you look at him and he stayed hidden for ten years, I mean his his team, I guess the courier was a very yeah. effective guy and, and didn't turn the phone on until he was ninety minutes yeah, away. That's right. I mean a very smart. But what do you think finally? did them in like it was obviously that that woman caught yeah i think it was just her determination there was um you mentioned the movie zero dark 30 it was about a woman it was it was actually a team of women that found him but there was one woman in particular that was the one that's like he's a hundred percent just why are we waiting go get him he's there and so, then she wanted to bomb him she didn't really want us to go but uh she turned out to be pretty happy. There's a good story in her uh, in there too about uh, she was pacing outside and I was like, "Why are you nervous?" She's like, "Are you kidding me? Why aren't you nervous?" I'm like, "Well, we do this every night. I mean, this is we're, we fly somewhere, mess some people up, fly back. This is a longer flight. You need to be right." So I understand. <laughs> <that one. laughs> I'm amazed. That, okay, well, I was going to ask like, at what point do you realize that you might be going home? Because like you said, you go well, in it thinking was, it we're was probably when we were, not. When we were flying out. We were leaving on a helicopter, a different helicopter, because we had more operators um, coming to get us. So we had other guys in there that, that were in a different one, and we're flying out. And now it's like, okay, we got 90 minutes. Like, we might live through tonight, and if we get 90 minutes, um, we get 50 years of life. Like, this this could be good for everybody. And then you're looking at your watch. It's like, okay, it's been 10. It's been 20. It's been 30 minutes. We're flying. It's 40 minutes, night. You know, you're thinking it. And the, the way I describe it is using a sports analogy. It's like watching a, a no-hitter at Yankee Stadium at the right. top, top of the sixth. I don't want to say anything. I'll jinx right. it. So, so but this, is, this is what's amazing, though, that I don't think people take into account that, like, you can't... Let's not get all excited and think that we're going to live, live for another yeah. hour. <laughs> like, let's not put the... Hor- the and then it, it was just so funny, but like looking around, and then you're 70 minutes, and now it's you can it's then another sports analogy. It's like uh, uh, up in Lake Placid for the hockey game when the R- Americans beat the Russians. People are counting down, but they don't want to count too loud. It's like right. 10, 9, you, and then over the radio, the pilot said, "All right, gentlemen, for the first time in your lives, you're going to be happy to hear this. Welcome to Afghanistan." And we're like, we did it. You knew you were in, and you knew you were out, and you knew we you were safe. It. We make to Afghanistan, we live, and we and- did. Touching on something you talked about before, which is the idea of going to kill this guy, and you guys know the mission. Do you, because I'm sure people, some people recognize you and some people don't now that you've been on TV. Do you ever have an interaction in daily life, whether it's like you're online at the airport or doing something, and someone's just kind of being a dick, and you're like, God, you have no idea. It's, uh, <laughs> it's got to be tempting to best, think that the way. The best one I had is it was, um, I came out with a special on Fox uh, a couple of years ago, and I wasn't used to anyone recognizing me. I wasn't used to anyone, especially knowing my name. And I was behind. Uh, uh, a woman and her her, her high school age daughter at LaGuardia, and I heard her say, "Thank you for what you did." And I looked up, and she's kind of staring at me, and she, and she elbowed her daughter and said, "This is Rob O'Neill." And the daughter looked at me, and she goes, "Oh man, we have a test about you on Monday." And I was like, "What do you mean?" And she said, "A current events course in high school." And I said, "Well, okay. Do you have a, a pen and paper?" And she said, "Yeah." So I said, "What's your name?" And she said, "It's uh, Victoria." So I said, "Victor," I said, pl- "I put please give Victoria an A." <laughs> And then I, we took a selfie, and I'm like, she's like, what do I do with this? I said, you show your teacher, and you say you took her assignment so serious that you found me. 
Yeah. So it's like little things like that. Are what you should have done was given her really wrong information <laughs> just so she failed the test. <laughs> that's not even close to what happened. Yeah, no, not at all. He was in Iran. <laughs> what? Oh. Normandy? That, no, that's years ago. But even being like a, a contributor to Fox News, like for me, I, you know, I get having that as a career, but I feel like if I had gone through what you went through and somebody was like, oh, did you hear about this news story? Like, what do you think? I'd be like, do you... What? I shot Bin Laden. Why would we talk about anything else? Well, I think there's, there's so much more to it because, uh, you know, we were, we were at the, I hate the term tip of the spear, but we were, you know, a tier one unit and the guys in there aren't just these, uh, you know, there's stories after these murderous whatever. These are smart dudes that analyze stuff. They come up with the plans. And so, um, just, just some of the stuff with some of my contacts still in the Navy, still in the, uh, the Marine Corps is like, I'm able to get on there and sort of, I try to dumb it down. It's like, this is what's happening. I don't need to get on television and tell you a lot of names of this and that. So I sound smart. It's like, bad guys are here. Good guys are here. We probably should try this. Just, to, I mean, I don't, you know, try not to get the political, just try to tell the truth as best I can. So. Do you feel like, cause I, I kind of, I feel like when when things happen more and more nowadays that for some reason society here in America has gotten less tolerant of killing bad guys whereas like right around 9/11 and right around when you yeah, were doing stuff yeah. people were were hungry for justice and and Well the pr the problem is just with everything being so fast paced in your mobile devices the people the problem with never forgetting is people forget to never forget so they all of a sudden time heals everything you you forget about stuff and then with with everything being on social media you see how violent it is and and war is violent and killing people is very very violent it's very fast like i i've i talk about it in the book about uh, seeing a suicide bomber it's just he's there he explodes it's like all right i'm good that was fast it's a permanent nasty nasty thing and you know justice does need to be served but a lot of people don't they don't need to see what it looks like it's not pretty and that's what you think skews people's opinions is that some of these people are not trained to even see what well, this no, actually no, looks yeah. like, and it, I mean, it's, it is surprising because there's a lot of violent stuff out there, and we, and we were always as, as humane as we could be. You know, we had a lot of latitude as far as rules of engagement at first. Then it started to change, and we're, uh, you know, it, it, we're not saying we can prove there are women and children in that cave that are shooting at you, but we're not saying we can't say that they're not kind of stuff. But uh, right. we were never, you know, we we were always very precise with what we did. Always uh, hit what you aim at. Um, uh, I was fortunate to never see a child get hurt. Um, it was. Um, it was precision, but uh, really it was solid, solid dudes. And when you when you walk here, sorry, sir, when you walk no. into Bin Laden's bedroom and you see that it's him, mm -hmm. what's the? F I mean, obviously you're not thinking that you're reacting. It was about uh, less than a second of target identification. I saw him, and I remember. I mean, I can see it if I close my eyes. Uh, taller than I thought, skinnier than I thought, beard is gray, shorter than I thought. That's his nose. He's a threat. He's not surrendering. You need to put him down. And it was that because he's a suicide bomber. I would have. I was just going in these, going up the stairs. Even it wasn't a bravery thing. It's like I'm tired of thinking about this. Let's get in there, and he's going to blow up. He didn't, and then it's, that's it. It's what did this house smell like? Or did it have no smell to it? <laughs> no, it smelled like uh, it was. It was similar inside to a lot of the houses. So it smelled like uh, an Af an house in Afghanistan. It's especially we we'd, we'd blown a few charges. Uh, so it smells. There's that that distinct air of uh, gunshots were fired. So it's uh, a, a smoky almost, um, but. You know, it was uh, it, as far as complexity. It wasn't the it wasn't the most difficult house we'd seen. It wasn't. It's not even the best story in the book. I mean, there's other stuff that we did in there, and just watching what happens. That's not love. guys figuring out the hard way that there are bell doorbells on houses in Iraq, leaning up against. All of a sudden, the <laughs> doorbell rings, and watching the breacher who's putting a bomb on, like, oh, I guess we don't need this. I'll just, I'll just roll this back up. We'll save that for another target. And the door opens. It's a terrorist you're looking for, and you just share a weird oh, moment. It's like that was easy. Yeah, <laughs> and literally looking at the boss, like we should just do that every night. Ring the bell, maybe they'll come out. Well, how do you think he feels opening the door? And there's the American. I was like, oh, I'm a dick. I should. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's other stuff in there too, like going to Afghanistan. I remember talking to some of my friends that went before I did, and I was like, "How was it over there?" And they said, "You just need to see it. You're, you you think I'm lying? You like people believe in fire breathing dragons? Like they don't know how old they are. They don't know what time is. Uh, just go see it. And uh, it, it's true. I mean, it's, it, a lot of those places in the valleys, it's it's a completely different world. Uh, I'm from Montana. I've never seen mountains like I did in Afghanistan. Just steep and rocky, and and um, it's it's an incredible adventure. All because I got I got dumped. What was what was something when you're training to be a seal? Like what 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 was the thing that for you was maybe not the most difficult but the most annoying? Like I can't do this. The uh, the swims. I we would do we swam all the time as seals, and there was always a timed ocean swim. And I when I joined the Navy, I didn't really know how to swim. And I go to SEAL training. And there's guys that played like college uh, water polo and stuff, and really good swimmers. And so the, I was worried. I knew I wasn't going to quit just because. 
that would have made so many people right because you know you join the navy to be a seal from butte montana no one's gonna believe you know there's no way no one makes it through this uh but the sw- i knew i wouldn't quit but i knew that uh, I, I might not pass these swims but i, I never failed to swim so and what just, were the what, what were the, how long were you swimming for uh, two miles two nautical miles Wow. So it's like from the training compound of San Diego up to the Hotel Dell and then back down. And it's so weird to be uh, to to look at the people on the beach, one of the most beautiful beaches in the world, Coronado, mm-hmm. and you're out there getting tortured. They're not even paying attention. Like, Can someone stop this? This is madness. I have a couple of myths I want to ask you about because sure. these may or may not be true. Love it. Uh, the first one, when, you, when Obama comes in and you guys talk to President Obama, yes. uh, did he ask who actually got him just as a normal question and nobody would tell him? It was, uh, he didn't ask me. I had one of his, uh, I one of his I forgot who did it but they did ask my, myself and another seal and we just said we all did it it was we all did and then it, when he walked away my buddy said you could have just told him it was you it's like well did you want to tell uh, me no no it, it, was, it, was, it, was it would have been great if they were well we all did it and then you well, some of us more than others <laughs> so, yeah, especially uh, if you stood out and just embarrassed no, was, the guys <laughs> he did nothing <laughs> it, it was, you know you're in a room full of great operators and you don't want the attention it's not it's not because the team did like right I said I mean we, I got up to the third floor because of the guys that were in front of me they breached the door they they climbed the stairs. They got rid of Khalid bin Laden, and then it just my turn to go up into a room. Tactics got me there. Did you guys take? Uh, I, I heard that there, uh, you must have taken a souvenir of some sort. No, like, we no uh, beard hair, no nothing. Um, it was it was such a big time that personally, all I was thinking about was let's find the stuff that will be able to prosecute more targets. What Al Qaeda is up to? Where the rest? Let's find us. We have a time limit, and then let's live. Let's see if we can live. I wasn't concerned. I mean, looking back on it, it's like, you know, maybe, hey. Yeah, it might have been cool. Uh, <laughs> but no, but at the time, it was just grab what you can, uh, anything electronic, any thumb drive, any disk, any, uh, take a hard drive out of a, out of a uh, tower of a computer and get it back, turn everything over. And we turned everything over, as far as I know, uh, to, the, to the, uh, the agency people that were there. And we just wanted to, it was such a big thing, you know. And the photos, they, there was, I know you guys took a lot of photos, yes. you said, but there was, there was like the dummy photos going around that weren't yeah, the real those aren't pictures. Real. I've seen them on the internet. Why haven't they really, or what do you think it I is? I think they haven't because the initial, the initial um, reason was because they didn't want up, uprising. I mean, people get murdered over cartoons. What are they going to do about this? Um, if it gets to, I mean, I don't, it, it happened. Bin Laden's dead. We killed him. Um, yeah. But if I don't know if they want to release them, they can. They're, I mean, they're more graphic than the, the fake ones. I, I assume that they were, and I, I know that they buried them at sea, so there's no site for yeah. martyrdom, which, yeah. which kind of made sense. Yeah, yeah, it did. Where do you think? Uh, where they, where's uh, Al Zawahari? He's the number two guy. The, the yeah, he's, he's up in Pakistan somewhere. He's, he is. Yeah, yeah, he's up in the, it's one of the tribal areas. I would guess. Um, you know, he's 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 kind of quiet. He's, and he's not as charismatic. Uh, he's he's obviously the number one Al Qaeda guy, but I. I think but wasn't he like the real zealot in the group? Like like Bin Laden was yeah, like the, more he, the money yeah, guy. He, he was yeah he was he was a, he was definitely a crazy. Uh, more, it's hard to say more fanatical, but he was the guy that screams in the prison, is yelling there, all this stuff. And, right. and uh, Bin Laden was more the charismatic uh, mastermind. Uh, so to the point where people weren't sure if he was running it, but he was from that house that we found. When you talk about, I mean, how graphic the photos were, I don't know if people realize that you guys had to push his, yeah, his head, head back, back together. together. To the picture, yeah, yeah. A lot of, if anyone criticizes anything about that, they've never seen what someone who just got shot in the face looks like. Right. It's it's. I mean, and you, it's like, sorry, we didn't kill him nice enough. But <laughs> that uh, I know, right? Well, even people have said you don't want to shoot him in the. It's like, well, you've never dealt with a suicide bomber. There's one way to shoot. You don't shoot him in the chest. People people take a lot longer to die than you would think. Exactly. Right. Suicide bomber, you shoot him in the head. Sonny right. Corleone took thirty shots to kill. You had to do it right to the face. How good did it feel? Is that what the first shot went right into the temple? Yeah. Yeah, I hit him three times in the head. Three, all, yeah. all three headshots. It was just fast, and we'd done it before. And we we trained to a point at that uh, SEAL team to take headshots because our primary mission is hostage rescue. And if you're rescuing a hostage, you need to eliminate the threat if you, the negotiations fail, which we've done. So we get we take. You always hear the double tap, two to the chest, one to the head. No, it's it's two or three to the head. So normally, the, with the police, they say you shoot for mass. That's why the people say shoot for the legs. They can't. They shoot for like a center mass, I yeah. guess, because it's mean, easier. It's, but it's you got a lot of stuff going on when you're talking about shooting people. People are moving. People don't want to get shot. Um, it, it, it takes, I mean, I, I must have fired my weapon a couple million times before I went to war, just training to do it. Um, but, and there's a lot to it. And, and anyone can Monday morning quarterback. Why sure. didn't you shoot him in the leg? Why didn't you shoot the gun out of his hand? It's like, I don't know. Why do you work in a cubicle? I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I think, I think that was the best. Plus, he had six foot four target. I heard, yeah. I, right I heard a good one one time. One of, uh, an awkward question is always, how many kills you have? Someone asked my buddy, how many kills you have? He goes, I don't know. How many emails you typed today? <laughs> <laughs> do you know? No. <laughs> hey, didn't you have a friend, too? This, this has got to just suck. 
one of the guys on the team, he had no idea. They hadn't announced the mission was, and he asked to be taken off it because he was preparing for something there else. Was a, there were a few guys that did that. One guy needed uh, shoulder surgery. One guy oh. was running a trip in January, and he wanted to go out there to plan it. It's a lot going on, and... Uh, no one knew what they were doing, and they willingly took themselves off the big mission. I know guys that went to training uh, to be instructors two days. If they would have waited two days, they would have been on the mission, but they went to, to assist with training. So just the, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's, it's just it was a crazy time. And it was so, do you know how mad you must be when you get pulled off probably what is considered the most important SEAL mission, which is killing the number one terrorist yeah. in the world? Just being a part of it was an honor. It and was, I right? I couldn't imagine getting pulled. I know how I would feel. I mean, I would be really bitter. Well, you guys were also scheduled. Your, your team was supposed to be on the perimeter. For You weren't even supposed to be in the yeah, house. I was, I was the team leader for the, the snipers on the outside, and um, when the female analyst was so convincing that the rooftop team is probably going to get them, I just I, I was like, we're going to need more people. So I'm going to we have team leaders out there. Let the other snipers do it. I'm going to get on this one. And we were so convinced the house was going to blow up when we the, the initial plan was to land on top that we were actually calling ourselves the Martyrs Brigade. Like we're going to land there, it's going to blow up. That's how we're all going to die. But but if we wow. don't, we might get a shot. And then none of us ever went to the roof. It didn't even happen because the helicopter crashed and they let us out here and we're just. So when you, I want to, I want to go back to the to the photo. Wait, is this something you go like, okay, we're gonna need a photo of this guy? In training, do you go well? If we shoot him in the head, his head could burst apart because that's what well, happens. We're gonna, or is it just common sense? Well, we would generally take pictures of the guys that we did kill because you want to you want to document everything that happened. Here's you know here's the situation. Just you want to be legal with everything. You know sure. we're the good guys. We're, we're, we're we'll arrest you, but we will kill you if you put up resistance. So we're used to taking pictures, but never to the point of the facial recognition where we need the DNA. We need you know we I w I've been on missions in Iraq going after when uh, uh, Abu Musab al Zarqawi was like the number one guy but we never he's one that started all the beheadings yeah too. he started well yeah he didn't start it but he made them well yeah he made them popular the yeah, yeah yeah they started that stuff yeah centuries ago, ago. yeah yeah <laughs> Well, yeah, I'm glad we can laugh about beheadings. Well, you know, it's, <laughs> it was more. We're laughing at my my idiotic statement. No, about phrasing. Idiotic. no it was it's a terrible he phrasing. He was the one, though. That he he was the one that, and that actually that is terrorism. That 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 scared people. Yeah, I mean that's that's evil. It was it was uh, I was I performed in Iraq in 2003. A beheading? Was, uh, no, I did not. Although oh. people wish I was the victim one. Oh. No, I went, I went over to uh, to perform for troops in Baghdad and mm -hmm. um, you know and, and Kirkuk and Talil and. Uh, that was right after that is when they started, and it frightened me so much. Oh, yeah. I didn't want to go back. I yeah, never went back just in case that's, the helicopter that's the whole crashed. Point of doing it, they want to show you. What, they were so bad. That was uh, Al Qaeda in Iraq that became ISIS. They were so bad. Even like leadership of Al Qaeda was like, "Yeah, hey, you're you're a little too brutal." Yeah, you weren't know. there a couple that they said that, that you're you're doing this to a fellow Muslim? This is terrible. Yeah, because we got to consider most victims of terrorists are Muslims. It's right, not, you know, and they and they the, the beheading, the mass shootings that, that they're doing. I mean, they're doing it now. It's still the same ideology that started with uh, with Al Qaeda, with with that version. Um, but yeah, it's, I mean, what they wanted to do is they wanted to make fewer people want to go over there. Which I mean, I can't blame them. That's that's scary. It scared me so. We flew around in C one thirties again. I was only there for a week, and it was not like you know anything compared to the guys who were on the front lines with with uh, what they go up there with Black Hawks and perform. Mm -hmm. We didn't do. But that scared me so much, like the idea that I'd be in a Black Hawk that would go down or whatever. Like I, I just never went back. So the tactic does work. It does. It does. It gets you thinking. It's bad. It's there. There's some bad people over there. Do you have a favorite movie based on the missions that you were a part of? Because um, there's been. I mean, you were part of the, Captain Phillips. You just said. Yeah. You're part of the mission that uh, Lone Survivor is Captain based Phillips on. Captain Phillips is a good movie. I liked it. Um, that's a funny one. I'll get. I'll get asked uh, how accurate is that movie, and I'll say, yeah, it's, it depends on who's asking. Like right. seventy percent if I'm talking to some dudes, but if it's happy hour and it's some ladies, I'll say, you know, it's a hundred percent accurate. I took all three shots. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think Lone Survivor did a good job, and I just watched that the other. The best war movie of all time is Saving Private Ryan. I'm uh -huh. still mad that Shakespeare in Love won the damn best picture. Wow. Yeah, it's it's nice. but uh, it's I think as far as if you want to know what a mountain a uh, gunfight in the mountains looks like, watch the Lone Survivor. It's a good one. And we and we were uh, part of the rescue. That same team. We were there for uh, that was my first deployment with that SEAL team, and we were up there for uh, for that. Just a, and there was so much more going on. That, like our part of that story, we weren't involved with that gunfight. We were trying to get them out. Right. Um, and it was just that was like the first time we called in an, an A10 uh, on people, and an A10 is an anti tank flying gun. And I remember hearing it, and I described that, uh, it, how it goes over my head, then impacts, then we hear it fire. And we came up with that uh, saying, um, 
what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, except an A10. An A10 just kills you. <laughs> nothing stronger about that. Are you scared? Well, I mean, I'm sure you're, uh, hopefully you, you are able to self-protect. Yeah. Uh, are you scared walking around because they, you know, in daily life or for family or? Uh, not scared, but aware. You're aware. And we have stuff in place. I don't really get into the sure, security yeah, stuff, sure. but there's, there's, you know, guns, dogs, whatever. Okay. Uh, there's stuff in place. So you're going to be okay. I, I assume so. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Was that a big decision? Was that a big part of your oh, yeah. decision? Yeah. I, I mean, I, th- I think about it a lot. And it's important. I mean, complacency kills. So resting on your laurels and just because something bad hasn't happened doesn't mean it won't. Do you think that uh, speaking up and coming, because I'm happy you did, because I wanted to know who you were, and I think a lot of people wanted to know who you are. You know, um, is it one of those things that's kind of a sign of the times, like we're much more geared towards coming out and talking about things now, whereas we didn't 20 years ago or 30 years ago? Well, I think that, I mean... I think that people have always told their stories historically. There was, a, there was a big gap about I can't talk about it because nothing was going on. Like, I mean, so you had Vietnam and there's a, thousands of books. Then you nothing. And then you have like Grenada books. You have Panama books, Desert Storm books. Like the books are out there. And I think it's good. I think if people go through that kind of thing and it's a good story. And it's good for Americans to hear. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with telling a historical account. Like, this book is the first one that's um, about, that involves some of these raids that is approved by the Pentagon, which it was. I submitted it. They read it. They liked it. It's approved. I don't think there's anything wrong with um, with Americans knowing that there are good people out there doing it. A question about sure. the death. This is the one, one and I love the book. That I, Thank I, you. Uh, one, one thing is they block out a word. Yes, they did. However, <laughs> I got to call out the copy editor here. They, they block out teal C, uh, SEAL Team uh, blank. No one knows. Knows what it is unless we've been alive for the last five years and they block out the, the number of the seal team however earlier in the book you say and now we named it that because i guess they were the, there was seal teams one and two and then yeah three <laughs> and the, i guess we wanted the russians to wonder they, what happened uh, to three four and the, five the, the, pentagon, <laughs> the, the pentagon was very gracious i was i was very careful not to put classified material sure. in there and just because it was i submitted it they had to put, do something they had and to they, yeah they got to block some stuff out they got you know they, they did a really good job i'm very happy with them and so they yeah, blocked we, blocked out a number so but we I don't know what the yeah, SEAL team we, I, number I, I was. I can't figure it out because they did mention I was a SEAL team 2, and I went to SEAL team 4, and then I went to SEAL team blank. That's true. <laughs> so it's one of a few numbers. You don't know. However, <laughs> they, the, the mistake they make, though, let me call it the copy editor again, is under the uh, the Hubble word, and then under it they have the blanked out thing, and you can see that it's three letters. So I guess you can do the math on how many three-lettered numbers there are. <laughs> <pretty> much- <laughs> what I loved about it, though, because I read the whole th- I actually did the audio book, too. I read that out loud, which is interesting. i got to do a, a pr- on one last proof read before it is uh, comes out there's stuff in there that i thought they would blank but they didn't so there's things in like so i can't say this number but i can say stealth helicopter well you also didn't go into details about the helicopter no, either no, well it's not interesting people people don't a lot, a lot of people don't want to know the mechanics of this and they want to know what it smelled like like you like you asked earlier sure. what, what did it what did, what did it sound? how did you how, how did your friends feel looking at the at your brother's eyes knowing this is probably it but we're doing it and we're doing it for the victims of 9-11 we're going for the country it's just they want to know that they don't like a lot of people, they'll you know the, the gamers and stuff that know more about combat than I do will ask me what kind of the <laughs> stuff on the trigger. I'm like I don't know, man. The thing just it, I pulled it. What were <laughs> now, and you met uh, the president, you met the vice president, mm-hmm. of course. Uh, you must have met some amazing uh, people because of this. Yes, I've been put in spots where I do meet some pretty cool people. Who did you meet that you really wanted to meet, or that you got to speak to that you probably uh, wouldn't have had access to otherwise? Uh, you know, to be honest, it's uh, Tony Larusa. He, the uh, manager from the A's? Yeah, uh, yeah he's, he's in Arizona now. Okay. Yeah, he just, he, did he manage the A's or am I out of my mind? He was cool because he actually got past my security guy with a margarita in his hand. Why normally they can't do that? Well, I mean, it shouldn't, the bodyguard's there to guard. <laughs> and, he's, <laughs> and he's a former SEAL Team blank guy as well. Oh, he is. And La Russa showed up with a margarita. How's it going? <laughs> now, was the, now, this other SEAL Team guy, who you obviously have people around you who really know what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, was he a guy you knew before? Yeah, I knew him um, in training. Uh, in 1996, so we kind of went around the same time, and then we ended up at uh, at uh, SEAL Team Two together, and then he went over to the other team before I did. Then I saw him there, worked with him there, and it's it's, a, it's interesting the way, it, like the, like I mentioned about the name, the operator. It's about the life of the operator, all of them, and it, it intertwines. There's a lot of people that I met. 96 and go through uh, selection 2004 and then we're in Afghanistan looking for a uh, lone survivor then he's the guy that takes a shot at this Somali it's, it was so cool too they're, they're so they're so humble that it's almost like wow man you just made worldwide headlines like yeah cool wanna go to the gym let's, let's go work out it's like, yeah it's part of what you do that's it yeah but, the best part of that movie too was when the snipers took the shot and they just put the bipods up and left that's exactly how it went down really 
business is, business as usual. Very very cool guys. Do you know what reading, reading all the SEAL training stuff too? Which you can never if you're a male you can never get bored reading SEAL training stuff. Yeah, and, and it, it makes me realize how much I enjoy being comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> like the, the stuff that you guys have to deal with, like the, that whether it's carrying the boat on the head. I think the Yo, cold water. Yeah, it's yeah, and the, then getting the into the sand. Bad. It's just a common question that I get is uh, from like high school age. Uh, guys that want to be SEALs, they'll say, what, what should I be doing to prepare for this training? And I said, well, what are you doing? And the common answer is, I'm taking cold showers to get used to it. I'm like, alright, knock that off right now, because you just embrace the suck when it gets there. And I'm like, what do you mean? I said, well, here's the deal. If I told you in 30 days I'm going to kick you as hard as I can in the nuts, and you to get, to get ready for it, you had your best friend kicking the nuts every single day, it's still going to suck when I do it. Just That's a good take point. It happens. That's right. a great way to look Just at it. Thirty unnecessary nut kicks. Yeah, there's no reason <laughs> to take when cold it, showers. You I have think, to. Yeah, so I think if you want to be a seal, just take warm showers. Everything will just fall into place. Yeah. It's that simple. Just yeah. have the memories of being comfortable. Don't. Because <laughs> there's no way to prepare. No. I'm sure. I saw a photo, and it might have even been in your book, of seal training where these poor guys are lying in the in the surf, and uh, they're laying there holding up a, a log, and yes. the water's coming over their face. Mm -hmm. Like you can't prepare yourself. for The that. log. Yeah. They. Uh, um, they used to have a log there, one in particular that was called Old Misery. And it was like three times as heavy as all the other logs, which are heavy. And it just said, Misery loves company. And you, if you get special treatment, you get the log. That, that log was so evil. Like, guys would try to swim it out to sea on the weekends and get rid of it. It would wash up. <laughs> it would wash up and be right back where it's supposed to be. What's the closest to graduation you ever saw a guy drop out? Because you said once they usually, if you make it to Hell Week past Wednesday, you usually going to uh, be okay? Wednesday is a good indicator that you're probably going to make it through Hell Week. And that's like the most famous part. There are harder tests than Hell Week to come. But you've proven you can get through Hell Week. But there, I mean, you got to figure, we get into uh, diving, so it's all the physiology, the medicine, the dive tables, all the calculations and the math. And then you get into explosives and, and electrical, non-electrical, how to do this and static and don't blow yourself up. So there's a lot of stuff. But uh, one of my friends kind of lost his mind. The last part of SEAL training is, then people don't know about this, it's on San Clemente Island, which is right off the coast. And the instructor, because like I mentioned earlier, we're right by the Hotel Del Coronado for most of training. You go to the island, the motto is no one can hear you scream. So it's 40 straight days of uh -huh. whatever. And I'm convinced some of those guys brought some whiskey with them because they would wake up angry or than other days, you know. And I saw a guy lose his mind out there, and they had a, they had a boot him. But he, he ended up graduating with, I think, two classes behind us. Oh, okay. What are they very do? rare to quit. What are uh, they doing for 40 days? It's technically land warfare. So a lot of shooting. That's when you really start getting into the weapons, a lot of the automatic weapons and the explosives, uh, patrolling small unit tactics, just the basic stuff. But they're teaching you now. You're going to go to a SEAL team. You, you need to have a good base before. Because after basic SEAL training, then they send you to 13. It was 13 weeks when I got done of SEAL tactical training. Now it's a more defined, probably a better course, advanced tactics. And then so it, it, it takes about two years if you make it through everything on the first try to become a SEAL. Can you describe uh, beehiving? Because I get a bit claustrophobic. Yeah, that's a, that's a, and, that's and a the tough pool? one. Ugh. Yeah, they, they like to do the beehiving. It's not a test. It's just more of an experience when you have about 180, 200 guys in the class and they they tell you to get as close as you can together in the deep end of the pool right so if you can imagine a big group just a big group of dudes and people have a tendency to freak out when they involve water um drowning is a really horrible feeling um so people will like grab each other's heads and push each other down to try to stay up so you got a bunch of guys doing this and the only thing you got to do is go to the bottom Take a wrap off, relax, and then swim to the edge and come up on the edge and then work your way back inside. Keep doing that. But, you you know, guys panic. Panic. If you panic is not going to help. It's OK to be afraid. Fear is good. Like fear makes you think more clearly. You know, like you can hear like imagine when you're at home watching a scary movie and you hear everything. Right. Like I, I'm I'm 41 years old. I was a Navy SEAL. I'll be watching a movie by myself. The ice machine goes off, and I'm like Satan. You know, like, <laughs> but um, fear's fine. But panic is very it, fine. Line. Oh, so you mean that that thing of like when you're watching a, a scary movie and all of a sudden you hear every creak yeah. in the floorboard oh, yeah. and every. But you have to be, and I guess that's part of training. You have to be aware enough to okay, stop for a second and use all of this and then sure. make yeah. a decision yeah. as opposed to just going it's, off instinct. That's the whole, um, it doesn't mean you're not afraid, it's what you do about it. Yeah. You, you do it anyway. You can deal with fear. It's okay to be afraid. But there were guys too, and to me the most amazing thing I read in your book was that on the way to Bin Laden's house, there were guys in that helicopter that fell asleep. Yes. I can't sleep on a king bed <laughs> in a fucking hotel. And this guy's yeah, going to they do were, this. Uh, it's it a different a, it breed of human being. It was incredible. Uh, it put the... Uh, Put the iPod in, turn it up, and fall asleep. Especially, especially with what you told us before, which was people go in 
As- not only not knowing if they'll make it, but assuming, assuming. we're not going to make it. Yeah. So it's like, well, if I'm going to if I'm going to die doing this, just, I might as well be well rested. Yeah, right. I mean, how amazing this! I could get blown up any second, any second. But I'm going to just take five and right. sleep it off. But, but it goes back. It goes back to get your mind off, and and it goes back to training for being a, a seal. It's like I'm not going to do something now that's going to make me uncomfortable because I can't. I I know everything that I'm going to know yeah. going into this, so I might as well be as comfortable yeah. as possible in these last few moments. Some guy's biggest concern was, why well, don't want to have to pee when I get there, so how do I do it on the <laughs> helicopter? And they, someone invented sure. these little, like, diaper things. These little, like, you pull out a little diaper, looks like a dog bone, you can pee in that. I didn't even use mine. I used a, a water bottle, and I, I, I was so pumped to be in Bin Laden's house, I forgot I had a bottle of urine in my pocket. You carried your urine in? That's yeah, so great. Yeah, it was on great. accident. I didn't mean it. What a See, nice guy you are, not to throw it out the <laughs> side of the helicopter. That's the souvenir. Now it's on his mantle. Yeah. <laughs> this is, this is my piss bottle from Ben Laden's house. <laughs> well, you gave, I, I thought you gave part of your uh, your magazine to the woman who I like, you think found, yeah, which I, I thought was really I nice. I took the magazine out of, out of the gun and gave it to to her. She, she, I mean, that was her thing. She she sacrificed her whole life to find him. She get, she didn't get married. She didn't have a personal life. She's, I will find him, and she was 100% right. And they really changed the day of the raid because of the White House Correspondents yes. Dinner? Yeah, we had two days um, based on, we wanted 0% illumination from the moon. So we had either Saturday or Sunday that we can do it. And Saturday, we, wow. we someone, I didn't, but someone called the, the White House and said, hey, we're uh, probably the Admiral McRaven or somebody, and, and said, hey, we're going to move it because the weather's bad. Um, so we're shifting to tomorrow. And I guess they were like, it's 2011. We know exactly what the weather's doing. It's not, we just did it because of the correspondence dinner. If the, all the cabinet gets up in the middle of it, all the press is there. What's going on? People start calling. So, they, And even uh, uh, President Obama was getting roasted at that dinner right. about how uh, Osama bin Laden actually hosts a, a show on C-SPAN every day at this time. And he just, Poker face. Probably the best line ever done at a correspondence dinner was Seth Meyer said that. Yeah, how that, how was, bad C SPAN was. Yeah, and Obama, that was a good line. Obama, Bin Laden was, hosted a show on C SPAN. Yeah. It was very funny. <laughs> so so the, you, the one day that everyone watches C SPAN. Could they watch now? Was there video? Could, could they actually see no. live action video? No, they could see uh, from above. They had some assets above us to watch, but they, they weren't in the house. They couldn't see in the house. And, and we don't want them to, to sure. see what's going on. And you know, you hear, well, everyone wore Go, GoPros. No, there were no cameras inside. We had the disposable cameras cameras take the picture that's it were you able to keep a copy of the photo no you were not no so me begging you after this interview yeah, to say it I, that's i don't have it i um i don't know how i feel about that i, I mean I just, could I you sketch it. it for us yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like we demonstrate on sam <laughs> you know it's one of those things where you saw it though you don't need to have the picture I no mean, i mean i it. i can close my eyes and see see what happened i i can I, I can i can see the stairs i can see the curtain i can turn the corner see the wife i can see the little kid there's a two-year-old boy in there and i remember thinking this kid has nothing to do with this a poor guy and like and i watch guys on that mission Putting kids in different spots because even though we're probably going to blow up, I don't need that little girl being more afraid than she needs to be. So I'll find a place to put her. And the book, are, sorry, I'm sorry, Rob, uh, the operator yes. f- firing the shots that killed Osama bin Laden. I'm guessing it's out today. It's out today. It's yes. out now. Mm-hmm. Are you doing any book signings or no? Um, I did an online signing yesterday, and again, it's a security sure, issue. Sure, of course. Um, yeah, I mean, I would like to. I probably will. Um, I'm not sure where yet, but um, yeah, we put out a couple signed copies yesterday, and um, yeah, it's available right now. And it's, uh, it, it's a great read. I mean, I, I would really, I, and again, you. I knew a lot about this because I've read about it. I've seen the movie, but there's a lot of stuff in here about the training and about the, the ra- there's so much detail in here. Uh, I was really happy. I didn't just take for granted that I knew what I was talking about and I wound up reading it. It was really great. <laughs> and the signed copies are available at theoperatorbook.com. So if you want a signed copy of the book, you can buy you it right at, now yep. at theoperatorbook.com. Mm-hmm. I'll be signing for a while. What are you doing now with yourself? Like, like you, you obviously you're doing the book, yes. But now that you're out, how do you top that in, in life? Like, well, what, what the, you... my greatest satisfaction now is helping veterans transition to the private sector because you'll notice in the book too that uh, I didn't do 20 years. I did I did almost 17, and uh, I got out. And the scariest part it was like I know friends now that mm-hmm. would rather go to combat than try to fill out a resume because the, the combat makes sense to them. I don't know what do I have, what are my skills, um, but these guys have the the stress management, the team awareness. The, and the big one now is loyalty that employers say. So I started a foundation to help them called Your Grateful Nation. And I help special operators. So it's Rangers, Green Berets, SEALs, Air Force. Um, we find a mentor for them in a business and a place they want to live and work. And they mentor them for six to nine months, give them a job. And they're, we got everything from we got guys working at Fox Sports doing NASCAR stuff, all kinds of good things. And, and uh, they love them. So your Grateful Nation it helps them transition. That's And the best email I get every week is when we say we play Sergeant so-and-so with 
Goldman Sachs or whatever. Right. And they, and they go there and they, they do like they always did. They crush it. And, and, and you know, your, your life and the things you've seen and the things you've been a part of, what is the, what is the biggest thing that people don't understand about it? That, that they get wrong, whether it's in the news or publicly when they criticize. What's the thing you're like, you just don't know what you're talking about? Um, just the, the negativity with what our, our men and women do over there. It's like you get a, it's like anything. You get a couple bad eggs and it just makes everyone look bad like these these people that i've seen uh the 19 year old marine the 25 year old ranger th- these are the good guys they're really good people they really care about people and they're they're trying to do the right thing and when they when a lot of people just to get headlines want to want to stress war crimes and go to the evil Amer- it's like no they're over they're doing a good thing and they're away from their family and 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 they matter and you also said in gi jane you guys did not eat out of a garbage can <laughs> uh, that's that, not true you know her name was o'neill in that movie was so, it? Yeah, that's my name too. She spelled it with one L, but that's it's not the worst I've ever seen. No, we don't. They actually force feed you. You're burning so many calories a day during SEAL training. They 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 make you eat. Um, it's a fine line though, because you don't want to scarf down five cheeseburgers and then do a six mile run. That's that's not a good idea. What's the difference between regular SEAL training and then the idea of the team, whatever, um, you know, team uh, we don't know, ambiguous. That what, what's the difference in the training between helping um, for a SEAL and then going up to that when, level? When you're going for the the tier one team. Um, it's everyone there is an experience, usually, well, combat experience, uh, seasoned Navy SEAL. So they're gonna, you know, they're gonna die before they can't do something. So you, you're not gonna make them quit. So we, you come up with drills to get in their minds, stress management drills. How do you, how do you handle stress? Um, little things. It's a l- very, very advanced, fast moving tactics where you're gonna get hammered for not, for ma- not making a mistake, but we're telling you you did to see how you, can you, can you get over it? Um, so it's it's a fifty percent. It, when I left, fifty percent of seals that tried out didn't make it. That's saying something. These are very 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 serious people. After going through that kind of training, do you find that when you get back into regular life, your tolerance for people's excuses <laughs> diminishes? <laughs> um, I don't. I don't like traffic. The traffic still gets to me. But uh, yeah, as far as like the other stuff. Um, yeah, it's, um, the, what, the best story I have about that, getting out of a life like this, uh, I don't have a desire to scuba dive or skydive or even shoot guns anymore. And, uh, I had a, a psychiatrist in the Navy say, well, you need a hobby to relieve stress. So she had me take up golf, which actually is more stressful than combat. It's <laughs> frustrating. And I also mentioned too that if, um, if they sent me after Bin Laden with a five iron, he might still be alive. <laughs> It's one of those things where you still have to have that instinct, even though you seem like a humble guy, where, where somebody will tell you you can't do something, or like, no, nah, we don't have room for you today, sir. You have to just want to say, I, you, yeah. You. It, it's frustrating getting the extra um, security check at the airport and then the selfie with the TSA guy. That's frustrating. Oh, did they ask it's you like you take- knew who I was, and I'm not a threat. to. I'm not going to blow the plane up, but let's go ahead and... Pat me down a little bit and grab a selfie. <laughs> I think they pat you down because they want the selfie. That's I think probably, it, could, it could be. Yeah, Absolutely. they need to slow you down so that they can get the opportunity to be like, oh, and one yeah. more thing. Oh, please. I like if, to give them the benefit of the doubt, though, because they deal with passengers all day. And so it's whatever. If they recognize you, they're probably like, oh, well, how else am I going to talk to them? I would just touch them under your arms. They just want to yeah, talk to you for a second. Yeah, you in a quick cup. Yeah, it's just, oh, yeah. That's a little creepy. I don't know if I'd, yeah. Hey, I guess so. Yeah, he shot a lot. Guess what I did to him? <laughs> well, uh, again, I appreciate you coming. Buddy, uh, yes. the book is called The Operator. Again, we keep saying it, but it's, it's excellent. And I'm not saying that just Thank to be you. polite because you're sitting here. I, I, I read a lot of it. I read the, uh, most of the beginning. I read all through the end. It's phenomenal. And there's a lot of information here. It's well written. It's an easy read. It's really great. Were you surprised when uh, conspiracy theories started to pop up that because there was no, no photo evidence, this didn't happen? No. Or is that there's part for the people, course? They, uh, like I mentioned earlier, usually the simplest answer is what happened, but people make it like the big. Uh, Secret societies of this and that, and that we didn't land on the moon. The Earth is flat, and all, it's like you're not in the Illuminati. Is that what you're <laughs> the telling Illuminati me? Illuminati is what I was looking for. No, yes. not that you know. Like, well, yeah, that's, <laughs> maybe that's the word that was that was <laughs> yeah, leaped out of the book. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> yeah, Seal Team Illuminati. That's yeah. right. <laughs> uh, before we let you go, just a couple of people want to say hello or thank you. And there's a guy here who was uh, a Navy veteran. Um, awesome. Hi, Fontaine. Oh, hey, sorry. Hold on. Sorry. I, I apologize. Great, oh, no. hold, hold on, Rob. I got. Do you get your headphones? Yeah, uh, I can hear. Hello. Go ahead. Jimmy, you there? Yes, we're here good. Hey, the special was awesome, and Sam, congratulations on the little one. Thank hey, you. Senior Chief, what's Thanks. up, buddy? How's it going, my friend? I'm good. I'm an EO3 from Desert Storm, and um, I just want to say from one Navy man to the next, thank you, buddy. And I had the privilege to hang out with some guys that were in Buds 151 back in the oh, day. Oh, wow, yes. You motherfuckers are <laughs> crazy. But thank you, buddy. <laughs> thank you for your service. That's awesome. <laughs> Thanks for the call. And, uh, and, and one more guy has a question for you. Uh, Ray Ray. Hello, Ray Ray in West Point. 
Hi, um, Robert, big fan, and I just want to say thank you. Thank you for saying that. And, I appreciate um, it. And um, I just have two two questions, really, really quick. Um, I I'm just a uh, I'm just a simple army brat. Um, when you when when you flew in with the uh, Blackhawks, were they like super quiet or just kind of loud? Uh, you know, anything with a helicopter is going to be loud. I was impressed with uh, with how they were pretty quiet, and it was just more of the radar stuff that they were pretty good at. But a lot of a lot of helicopters have that, and it pretty much looked like a uh, like a Blackhawk. It was a little okay. more little more room. Badass. Okay, second <laughs> question: Which one? Which one's better, five five six or 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 a three hundred blackout? Well, it depends on what you're doing. Five five six with a hollow point worked pretty well for me. Uh, most of my shots were really really close. I think a three hundred for anything over five hundred meters. All right, Roger that. Cool. <laughs> Thank right, you. Thanks. We, I didn't know what you meant until you said hollow point. I'm like, ah, bullets. <laughs> okay, I had no idea. Well, thank you very much, uh, Rob. Really fascinating guy. I'm, I'm ha- so happy we got Thanks a chance to talk to you. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it.